This is a simple scrolling text display. You can select different messages with a push button on the side. On the back, it takes three AAA batteries and you can adjust the scrolling speed of the text with this knob. This connector is for the PicKit 3 so that you can upload new text from your computer. And in this video I will show you, step by step, how you can build your own scrolling text LED display just like this one right here. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. The scrolling text display is a lot of fun, but also very useful if you want to learn how to control a whole bunch of LEDs with just a tiny microcontroller. Here's what you need to build the scrolling text display. Five 170 pin breadboards, a 4.5 volt AAA battery compartment, a 4.7 kilo ohm potentiometer, a push button, a toggle switch, the PIC16F1455 microcontroller and for each digit a common cathode 7 segment LED display, a 220 ohm resistor and a CD4094 shift register. This project uses 8 digits but if you want 20 instead well you can always add more. You will also need the PICKIT 3 programmer and a simple 6 terminal connecting cable. You can find a detailed list with a lot of additional information in the companion article on FriendlyWire.com. Just follow the link in the description. But before we jump into the schematic and start building the display, I want to tell you a little bit about shift registers. A shift register is like a conveyor belt for bits. It has a data, clock and strobe input. The eight outputs are called Q1 to Q8. On the other side, there is an additional output called Q'S. Whenever the clock pin goes to 1 and then back to 0, and we call that a clock pulse, the conveyor belt moves 1 to the left and whatever bit is at the data input will fall onto the conveyor belt. You can keep doing this and fill the register with a total of 8 values. They're either 1 or 0. When you want to put in a ninth bit, the leftmost bit will fall off the belt and is passed along to the Q'S output. Only when the strobe input is pulsed from 0 to 1 and back to 0 again, the Q1 to Q8 outputs will show the current state of our bit conveyor belt. Here comes a nice trick. Connect the Q'S output to the data input of a second shift register and connect their strobe and clock lines in parallel. Then you have created a 16-bit shift register and you can keep doing that forever and we call that cascading, just like with pancakes. For our project, the eight outputs of a shift register are connected to the eight segments of a seven-segment display. Yeah, I know, nobody ever counts the decimal point. By sending out just the right sequence of ones and zeros, we can display anything we want on each seven-segment display. It's a bit hard to display some characters like M or W, but I think overall it works quite well. Because we cascaded the shift registers from right to left, one after the other, we can just send out character by character of our text message and that will create the scrolling effect for us automatically. And now that we understand the main idea, let's take a look at the schematic. We already understand this huge upper part here. It's eight CD4094 shift registers all cascaded together and their outputs are connected to our eight seven segment displays. It starts with IC1 on the right and keeps going all the way to IC8 on the left here. The clock and strobe lines are all connected in parallel and the Q'S output of each register is connected to the data input of the next one. Only the first data input is directly connected to the PIC16F1455 controller all the way down here. The three AAA batteries are connected to the circuit via the toggle switch S1 that turns the whole circuit on or off. These funny looking symbols here just stand for the power supply pins of the 8 CD4094 shift registers. The push button S2 connects pin RA5 to ground when it is pressed. 
and the potentiometer R9 sends a voltage between 0 and 4.5 volt to the analog to digital converter at pin RC2. This last symbol here on the right is the special adapter we saw earlier. It is called the In-Circuit Serial Programming Interface or ICSP for short. We will use it later to flash a hex file onto the PIC16F1455 without even removing it from the circuit. All we have to do is provide connections to VDD, ground, master clear, programming data and programming clock. If that last part confuses you, go check out my PIC microcontroller introduction video right here. Alright, let's build the circuit. All steps are also explained in great detail in the companion article on FriendlyWire.com. So go check that out later if you want to build the scrolling text display yourself. So we have to connect a bunch of 7-segment displays to their shift registers. The standard way to build this would be to take a breadboard, place the CD4094 like this with a notch to the left so that the pins are labeled like this. Then the 7-segment display could go next to it and we can connect the 220 ohm resistor. The 8 data lines from the register connect to the 8 segments of the aptly named 7-segment display like so. But this is not really a good idea for this project because when we build multiple of these boards, the displays would be very far away from each other and the text would be very difficult to read. But what else can you do? There are two methods that I recommend. The first one works completely without soldering and is great for beginners. The second one, well, it needs some soldering, but it is a bit more space efficient. Method one uses simple DuPont style wires with one male and one female side. The female side is plugged into the pins of the 7 segment display and the male side can then be plugged into the breadboard. Method 2 is different. If you extend the wires of the 7 segment display by about 5 to 10 millimeters and bend those wires to the side, then you can actually plug in the 7 segment display right on top of the shift register. You can even connect the 220 ohm resistor that way too. Here's how that looks like. If we make the 7 segment display a bit transparent in this image here, you can see how the 7 segment wires are plugged into the breadboard. Soldering this takes some time, but I think it is totally worth it because it makes the final breadboard super compact. I will follow the second method for the rest of this video, but if you don't want to solder, well, you can always use DuPont wires as well, no problem. First, place your breadboards in front of you and connect them together with the little notches. Plug in all the shift register ICs and make sure their notches all point to the left. That means their pins are labeled like this. Now connect the data input of the leftmost register, that is IC8 in the schematic, with the Q'S output of the previous one, in this case IC7. Do the same for all the other registers except for the first one. Now we need to wire up the plus 4.5 volt connection at pin 16 of each register. I made my life a bit more difficult by putting two wires in the same hole, but I think it looks a bit cleaner this way. All these red wires now form our plus 4.5 volt power rail. Each register has an output enable input at pin 15 that needs to be connected to plus 4.5 volt, otherwise the outputs are shut off permanently. Our registers are on all the time, so we can permanently connect this pin to plus 4.5 volt as well. Now comes the magic part. Plug in all 8 7 segment displays. This takes some time, but if you have bent the wires correctly, this is actually a lot of fun. And all that soldering pays off with a super smooth installation. Now connect all strobe inputs at pin 1 together, just like we did with the plus 4.5 volt power rail before, and then connect all clock inputs at pin 3. And last, we need to create a ground rail as well. Ground is pin 8 and I use black wires for that, like so. The resistors already, conveniently, plug into the ground rail as well because we bent them in the right way. And that's it. Now it's time to connect the 7 segment circuits that we just built to the push button, the switch, the potentiometer and the battery compartment. And how you do this depends of course a lot on the enclosure that you decide to go with. And here I will just show you how I did it. It didn't go perfect, but overall I'm still pretty happy with the way it turned out. This is a cheap pencil box made of very thin wood that comes with some sort of metal hinges. 
At this point, I'm just disassembling everything, but don't throw all the screws away, we will need them later. So this is our box, and you can see from the side that it's not exactly symmetrical. It has a big side and it has a thin side. And the way I want to do this is, well, this is supposed to be the bottom with only the two holes at the top. And then this thing is going to go on the back like this. So the thick side is pointing towards the bottom. Our display board is going to go in like this. We've got to center that. We're going to drill a hole somewhere in the bottom right so that the cables going to data, clock and strobe and you know VDD and ground can be passed through on this side. And then there's going to be a hole right there. On the back side, that hole is going to be somewhere here. Now this back panel is going to go on like this and there's a bunch of stuff that we actually have to mount inside of this. Now this is going to go here. The cable is going to come out from somewhere here so we can just plug in the, the pick kit to program everything. The battery pack is going to go somewhere in the middle and then we have the potentiometer to control the speed of the display that's going to go here. We have our push button. So it's actually going to come outside on this side of the housing like so. And so that this guy, so that this guy doesn't feel all too alone, I'm going to put the on off switch right next to it like so. We have to cut some holes into this wood and for that I'm going to use just an X-Acto knife, believe it or not, because this wood is really, really thin and really weak. So that should be possible and I guess we'll take it from there. And that was it. There you go. Well, let's see. Does it fit? That's the real moment of truth. And now we got to do the same thing again for this guy. Let's go. Yeah, that looks close enough. So yeah, almost all the way through. That's nice. One, a two, a three, and that's it. Again, some clearance issues, but that's gonna be fine. Yeah, and that fits nicely. Like this. Ha, and this way we don't even have any tear out on the other side. I think this is as good as it's gonna get. Now we have to drill the holes on the side here and here. I'm holding my hands far away. I'm not pressing a lot, uh, so this is safe. But do this at your own risk. Like, don't drill into your hands, right? And there we go. Ah, this is too tight, okay. Ah, I was trying to avoid this, but we have to kind of like go in there and wiggle this drill bit around a little bit. So let's see if it fits. And it fits, so that's very nice. I think this looks good. And now for the last event of the day, which is this button here. So let's try to put this in as well. And there we go. And let's see if this switch also fits. But because this one is thinner, I think there shouldn't be any problem. And yes, it does. And doesn't that look just absolutely lovely? Nice and clicky. All right, so we're getting close to finishing this and I'm excited because this looks, well, I think it looks really nice. It turned out really well so far. Before I forget, there's also this thing that we have to build in still. Like this. And because I won't be painting this, I think I should use just an eraser and just get rid of those, uh, those pencil marks. All right. 
I'm gonna call that one good enough. And let's mount everything, well, with an unreasonable amount of hot glue. And now we have to connect um, this circuit to the microcontroller circuit on the back and everything goes through this little hole here. So as you can see, this fit quite nicely and now all those cables come out on this side and we have to connect them to the breadboard. It's a bit hard to see right here where everything goes. So I'm gonna superimpose an image that shows you the same process, but from an earlier perspective where it's a bit easier to follow along. Now red in our color coding language goes to plus 4.5 volts right here. Black is the ground terminal that goes here. Strobe is the blue wire that goes here. Green is the data wire that goes here. And then yellow is clock that goes right here. Ha, and look at this. This actually looks half decent. And because we use color coding and not just the same color for every wire, we actually also know how to connect those to the circuit board on the back. So let's do that one next. The push button goes between pin two and ground and the potentiometer is connected like that. And the switch connects the battery compartment to pins one and 14 of the PIC16F1455. Well, it wasn't pretty and it still isn't pretty, but at least it's together now. So you see there are some couple of gaps along the side, which I'm not very happy with. Um, I probably should have just used plain old wood glue and just like be patient and let it dry. But this one works. I think it could have turned out a lot worse. And now all that I have to do still is to connect those uh, connectors that goes to the Picket 3. So these ICSP, the in-circuit serial programming cables, but then this is gonna be it. And that's how that looks like. And if everything is now connected correctly, then, well, we are all done. Well, except for one thing, we still have to put on the knob. But now we're done. Oh, yes, <laughs> very nice. There is one last thing that I wanna do, and that is install a filter in front of these displays because, well, they're readable this way, but it doesn't look quite as nice. So what I wanna do is install something like this. And what is this? Well, these are just some sort of plastic file folders you can get for literally a few dollars. And this is actually kind of translucent material and there's plenty of it. So I'll just cut a bit out and try to place this in front of the display. And does it fit? It fits. First try. Uh, <clears throat> First try, <laughs> remember those? So I was thinking it would be fun to use like four of those screws to hold the filter in place. So let's see if it works. And it's on. Well, that's a bit slow. Let's make it faster. There you go. Now the last thing I wanna do is put on some feet because I had these kicking around for ages and I think it would be nice because this way it would stand at a slight incline. It would be easier to read. I think the red filter is an amazing addition because it really makes the LEDs pop and I'm just really happy with it. All right. When you're first building the scrolling text display and turn it on, well, nothing will happen. You have to flash a hex file onto the controller first. You also have to flash a hex file on it if you ever wanna change the texts that are being displayed. And that is where the ICSP interface comes in. And next I wanna show you how easy it is to use that interface and flash a new hex file onto the scrolling text display. Now this is our little setup that we need to flash a new text onto the scrolling display. Uh, let's first turn this thing on because it needs to be on for this process. And then in the source code on the left hand side that I just opened in MP lab, 
we can just change the text any way that we want. So I'm going to replace this message with something else. Let's, I'm going, that's going to just say um, something like this is a new message, one, two, three, four, five, something like this. I mean, whatever you want. And now we have to recompile this so that we get a new hex file out of all of this. And it takes a couple of seconds, but eventually it will be done. And then we can switch over here on the left side to the uh, integrated programming environment, the IPE, and load that hex file that we just created. And um, that's gonna be in the subfolder um, distribution default production. But if that's new to you, you can just check out my introductory video that I did on this um, about a year ago, and that has all these detailed steps in there. So we loaded this hex file, and now we just have to click on program. And you see on the right side, the display is gonna flash a bit on and off and on and off. And now you see this is, well, now you see it. This is a new message scrolling through. And that's our new message that we just flashed on there. And that's exactly how this works. So if you wanna do something else, just go back in here, change it any way that you want, remove some of the text any way that you want. But yeah, that's how you do it. I had a lot of fun building this scrolling text display and I hope so will you. In honor of the recent Pi Day, I also created a hex file that displays, well, the first 6,000 digits of Pi. And you can download that on my website as well. And this is how it looks like if you turn it on. And if that's too slow for you, well, you can always make it a bit faster or a bit slower. I'll put this guy probably somewhere behind me on the shelf so you'll see it in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what else you want to learn and I'll see you next time.